Uh, before we get started, I want to uh, just help you to understand that part of disciple making is the process of uh, going from being lost and accepting Christ and being baptized into Christ, as uh, Jesus said, go into the world and make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey all that I've commanded you. Uh, the introduction to Christ, baptism into Christ, speaks of the beginning of this discipleship journey that you're on. And um, it was meant for you to be on this journey with a more mature disciple maker. And one of the things that we know about our culture is that we've spent a lot of time and energy on evangelism, uh, getting people to pray a prayer or to uh, be baptized, but not a lot of time on what it means to go on this journey of discipleship with other believers, with more mature believers. And so I just want to remind you that you were never asked to become a convert, you were asked to become a disciple. And so what we're doing in this series is um, defining terms so that you understand uh, a common language with us, and uh, we're, we're basing these definitions on the Bible so that you understand what those uh, the, the key words in Scripture mean, and we're also... Uh, tying that to illustrations that every human being, uh, in America at least, can understand, and, and, you know, around the world as well. So we're using sort of a journey analogy of going on a road trip as a basis for this, this uh, journey of spiritual growth we go on. So um, one of the things that you'll see in the workbook is this... this um, biblical reproducible process Jesus took his disciples through, and, um, and you'll see what it means to be a disciple from a biblical definition. And uh, so you've gone through Matthew chapter 4, verse 19, or you will, Matthew chapter 4, verse 19, which is a root word, a root verse for us here in our church. And we say it this way, in the invitation is the definition of a disciple. Jesus said, come and follow me, and I will make you into fishers of men. So a disciple of Jesus is following Jesus, being changed by Jesus, committed to the mission of Jesus. And we're going on this journey. When Jesus said, come and follow me, I'll make you fishers of men, he was inviting them to go on a relational journey uh, of spiritual growth. So um, when you look through the journey analogy, you're going to see, here's what a disciple is, following, being changed by, committed to the mission of. The journey, he got invited you, Jesus invited you into this relationship, uh, and we call that a relational vehicle. Uh, the vehicle on this journey to spiritual maturity is relationship. And so um, when we are uh, disciple-making, we are going on a journey with someone we've been invited to know Christ and go on a journey with us. And so there's a process, we call it the share, connect, minister, disciple process. Jesus shared who he was, uh, he shared his life uh, uh, with them, and then invited them to continue that journey in relationship. So shared, he connected, he then trained these people for ministry, to become servants, to be a part of what Jesus was doing, and then sent them out to reproduce the process. So all of these are terms that are super important. Now, we, uh, when you accept Christ, not only do you um, get in a relational vehicle with Jesus, but you get in a relational vehicle with a more mature believer, and the Holy Spirit moves inside of you, and the Holy Spirit is like the gas for the car, so to speak. Um, he moves inside. He works uh, by um, showing us God's word, what it means, giving us people around us that he works through. And so we go on this share, connect, minister, disciple journey to what we call spiritual maturity in the five spheres. And um, that, that's going to be us unpacking Ephesians chapter 5, or excuse me, Ephesians, the book of Ephesians, and the five spheres that we see embedded in that. And the first sphere is abiding in Christ, which is, again, that gives us the direction, the power source. Uh, you're abiding in Christ when you spend time in the Word of God. The Word of God is a light into our path. You're abiding in Christ when you're with believers. 
uh, who, uh, who, because the Holy Spirit's present, there's something going on there that changes us and moves us and motivates us towards spiritual maturity in every sphere of our life. Ultimately, the destination is maturity in every sphere uh, on planet Earth, but again, we all know the ultimate goal, uh, the ultimate destination is we'll, we'll be living with Jesus with, with a community of believers forever. So that's the ultimate goal. As you go through this series, uh, this, this uh, series of podcasts, this journey in the workbook, as you enter into a discipleship relationship, I just want to make this clear to you. We, our goal is to help you become a disciple of Jesus who, in the end, is able to make disciples of Jesus. And um, you are a disciple. Again, one of my good friends, Keith, uh, said he'd been Christian for many years, and he came here and he found out for the first time that, that, that he was a disciple. Maybe you were never told you're a disciple, and maybe, maybe you were never told that the end goal for a disciple is one who's able to make disciples, but, but you are. And so as you go through this journey, we're hoping that you will um, go through the lessons daily, which builds into you a habit of spending time with the Lord and studying His Word. You'll be in a group. Uh, once a week, where you talk about what you're learning and growing in. Um, and at the end of this, you'll be able to have a, a, a kind of a reproducible process to remind you uh, and to go through again yourself, but then you'll take this and then use it as a tool to, to disciple somebody else. And it, this will become a movement that really uh, puts some practical uh, application to being a disciple. Now, I want you to know that you just because you go through a workbook series like this doesn't mean you're a, you know, it's not a program where you go, okay, I'm mature because I've been through the workbook. Uh, yes, it's a 12-week, three-month process, but we all know that we learn more sometimes than others. We get stuck. It's a program. You're never done becoming spiritually mature. Paul himself said, um, you know, that forgetting what is behind, he presses on towards what is ahead, and that um, and not that he has yet attained it, he says, uh, we'll never be done until we get to heaven. We're lifelong learners. But, uh, and this is not comprehensive. This book isn't meant to be comprehensive. There's subject matter that we didn't deal with because discipleship is, it expands into every part of our life and it's very nuanced, but it gives us a foundation to start with. One other thing you're going to notice is for those of you who have been through the Real Life Discipleship Manual, that's like uh, for leaders. We train leaders with that, how to lead small groups, and we add some things like phrase from the stage and, and a lot of things uh, about leadership skill sets and leading small groups. This is meant to be for the person out there that maybe doesn't have a church that does leadership training. Uh, this is meant kind of as a starting place for you as a disciple who can learn to make disciples. The Real Life Discipleship Manual uh, would be something that I would take next after this that then kind of says, okay, what does it look like to lead a small group in a church or to expand from just me discipling one or two other people to ongoing training and leadership skill sets? So there'll be some redundancy there, but from a different aspect. So that's the difference between the Real Life Discipleship Manual and uh, the Journey Workbook. I'm excited about it. I'm, I'm hoping that it'll uh, teach you some some uh, abiding habits and how to be in relationship and how to be a part of what God is doing. And uh, I'm looking forward to you spending time with this. God bless you, and I'm praying for you.